<laughs> Dave Rubin is out there. Uh, I'm sure we'll read about this in the Twitter files release. <laughs> 2029 or whatever it's going to be but here's dave rubin uh talking about uh his relationship with twitter i don't i, mean, I can't I, I can't wrap my head around this quite a bit but here here's dave rubin preface this by saying that the way this all unfolded is that about two weeks ago i got looped in with two uh, engineers at Twitter, because obviously I'm, I'm one of the more public people talking about the fact that something seems like it's really obviously. wrong with Twitter. There was a couple weeks when Elon got it where the engagement really seemed like it was the old days, it exploded again. And in the last few weeks, it seems very depressed and that seems very odd. Like, it's like, wait a minute, you got Twitter, it seems like it was fixed and now why did it get worse again? Pause All it, let's see if we can come up with a couple of reasons why <laughs> yeah. it's gotten worse. I mean, just in terms of content, there's all these uh, racists and uh, homophobes and transphobes and anti-Semites and uh, anti-vaxxers. More bots and, from what I've seen. And, and they're back in, and that has dominated a significant portion of uh, the engagement. I mean, ever since like uh, Elon sort of like uh, dipped his head below the radar and decided he didn't want to be the story on Twitter anymore, it got bore it got it got it got boring because all the you know the decent stuff p people just walked away from, and then it just became a garbage uh, uh, you know a, a, a sewer essentially. Yeah. And then the other thing is. I know now a half a dozen people who have been hacked over the past like four weeks, three weeks. Never had happened to them before. I um, I cannot leave a computer personally, and I've heard a lot of other people have the same problem, without having to sign back into Twitter. And then I go through the whole uh, phone um, the verification, and I got to do that two or three times before it works. And I'm I'm convinced that this what we're starting to see is the implications of getting rid of all these uh, people who are working at Twitter, like thousands and thousands of layoffs. That's going to have certain implications because he's trying to cut costs on office space. Yeah. And and the big implication that like all these uh, sort of like uh, venture capital people, like, see, people said it'd be over by now, it wouldn't load. Well, yeah, look at the revenue. <laughs> like the ad revenue is completely cratered. He's completely messed yeah. that up. Good luck fixing that, buddy. And Twitter and Twitter player doesn't work very well. All he did was uh, make the feed worse. You can have one where he suggests right wingers in your feed or you could have a chronological feed on Twitter, which is just a hellscape. And then he changed the color of the check marks, you know, to really stick it to the journalists. Yeah, that was a really great move. I don't, I didn't, I don't even think I've noticed that, but here is uh <laughs> Some are silver, some are piss yellow, some are blue. You can pay for the blue one. I haven't seen that at all. I haven't seen that at all. Politicians are silver. It, it's it's literally like a, an eight-year-old conception of, of what, you know, what you'd fix. a badge would be on a social media platform. What, uh, what, what does mine show up as? Yours it's is same, blue. Isn't it? Mine's blue. Right. I don't get it. I don't got one because. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Matt's cooler than all of us. Well, uh, hold on. Let's hear this, Dave Rubin, because I guess I can anticipate hearing from Twitter engineers now that we've mentioned this on the yeah. air. Go ahead. People usually somewhat conservative leaning, but it's basically just not woke people are claiming something's wrong. So anyway, these two engineers started doing a deep dive into my account. Not woke and people. as they were doing a deep dive into the account, I mean, really going into the code, they started seeing things that they had not seen before. So that's why this escalated to the point of, oh, Elon wants to see you. So all that being said, here is my thread with some of the nitty gritty. Can I offer like an alternative framing for this? Like, I think maybe the uh, richest man on earth decided he needed a hack to come in and do PR for him because is like people like Cat Turret are complaining oh, that the service wait. seems to be degraded. Wait a second, are you are you claiming Matt that you don't think that there's something nefarious going on in the code that somebody broke into Twitter and <laughs> changed Dave, we need the to code? see you. We've never seen anything like this. It's suppression. It's shadow banning on the, of the type we've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the shadow oh Matt. I'm surprised you're even alive after how shadow banned you are. I, I mean, Dave, I, think I can't believe what's going to go. Dave, what's who inserted this, this in the code? <laughs> 
there's no chance that, uh, by the way, that Dave was not incredibly eager yeah. trying to ask to come because Elon's <laughs> already check it out. <laughs> Elon's already run through his IDW Rolodex yeah. with uh, Barry Weiss. Taibbi, Barry Weiss, unfollowed Barry, yeah, Alex right, Berenson. yeah, those kinds of guys. So Dave's like, hey, why can't I get in there and you can do a deep dive into my account algorithm? Dave which, gets in there and the is, engineers is that a thing. The engineers show him like the the like um, green text screen from the <laughs> yeah, Matrix, black background, and he's like, like look at Dave. If, if you look close enough, you'll be able to see how shadow banned you are. <laughs> so all that being said, here is my thread with some of the nitty gritty. Spent the last two days at Twitter in San Francisco talking to engineers, product, uh, product managers, and yes, Elon Musk. Learned a ton about what's going on. Before I share, want to note that dropper. after a couple hour meeting, I asked Elon what I could share, and he said anything that's true. Connor, just come back to me for one sec before we continue on that. I just want to hit that point. Because so we met on the second night for about two hours, and it was me, uh, Elon had uh, one guy with him, I apologize, I, I actually don't even know that I was introduced to get his name, but then it was me, Elon, uh, this guy, and Pause it for uh, one David Sachs. Can you imagine being a, is, 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 is Tesla still, I think, a public company, right? I mean, people have invested. We've had Pete Collins yeah. calling, and they've invested their retirement funds uh, in, in Tesla. Can you imagine being that person and knowing that your CEO has, of, of, of Tesla, mind you, has so much time that, never mind the fact that he's theoretically, you know, dedicating it to Twitter, but he has so much time there that he has time to meet with Dave Rubin on multiple, uh, you know, like successive days and for two hours at a time, like what possible conversation, what could you possibly learn? Right. I, I, as Elon Musk from Dave Rubin, like, <laughs> what could you, like, what could possibly like the idea that this guy's spending two hours of that and remember, like he, Matt used to make uh, uh, some hay out of this, that, um, Elon Musk is working like, I work like 90 hours a week, 700 hours yeah. a week. <laughs> and two of those hours with Dave Rubin where he's like, really, can I say anything I want from this? And Elon's like, yeah, you moron. Everything we've been talking about is like flattering me. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and share it. Because yes, it's like, actually the point. I, 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 anybody who d um, watch this entire uh, segment and see if Dave shares anything that Elon might want secret. And of course he doesn't. <laughs> Go ahead. To get his name, but then it was me, Elon, uh, this guy, and uh, David Sachs Loser. Was with us. Um, we talked about a whole bunch of stuff, including politics and everything else, and that's really where he lit up. When, mm. I'll get to that in a second when we talked about some of my political awakening, which I think is similar to his. But think about how interesting that is, that at the end of the thing, at the end uh, of the conversation, not. I said, look, <laughs> I'd love to share some of this stuff. Is there anything you don't want me to say? Anything that's true. Like, and he didn't have to think about it. Like he didn't know what I was talking about with the engineers. I was sitting with engineers with their laptops, you know, two guys with their laptops yeah, two, coding, two guys, asking all these questions, engineers. and I'm asking them all these questions. He had no idea what I had seen. So the fact that his default position was anything that's true, I think that that says an awful lot about the guy. Okay, here's the wow, thing. Uh, a fractal wow. Rube Goldberg machine. Mm. That's what Elon Musk called Twitter. As they fix the code, more problems arise. A delicate balance he likened to a Jenga tower. One wrong move, the whole thing collapses. Can you They're working pause it? You don't need to take it off the screen, I but I just love the brilliance of this man using a Jenga tower as an analogy. That's never been done. It never been done before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your company's built like a Jenga tower? Is that what we're where, saying? Where here? one piece could come out, it would, it would collapse. <laughs> it would literally fall to the ground. Those thousands of workers might be some of those Jenga blocks. There, uh, there was a guy at Air America. I'm trying to, I honestly can't remember his name. He was the last guy to come in, the, the last uh, regime, and he was the CEO hired. He was from, uh, yeah, I, I'm, it's not, he was a consultant, radio consultant that came in. And this is after he had, um, he, uh, uh, they had fired Randy Rhodes and they had really basically just like destroyed their, um, uh, their market reach. I mean, all of it. And, and as I'm talking to the guy and he's telling me like, we're going to develop the, uh, the, the most liberal website. And then, then we're going to have a centrist radio station. And I was like, congratulations. You're the first guy in like 30 years to do a fully horizontal business plan. <laughs> you should open up a, a shoe store and refuse to advertise on either one of those platforms. 
Um, and he goes, look, there were five uh, decisions made before I uh, became CEO here that were a problem. And like the one thing this guy had actually thought about was his uh, pre-excuse as to why everything was going to fail. That was the one thing he did, yeah. and that's exactly what Elon Musk is doing there. Yeah. This thing is such a so such a mess. It's a if fractal you come Rube in and Goldberg treat it machine. the way that you should, it's <laughs> going to fall apart. And really, the only reason why this is not falling apart is because I'm here, yeah, even though it wasn't falling apart before. I'm here playing eight dimensional Jenga when I fire the entire <laughs> ad staff. <laughs> exactly. A fra- so a fractal Rube, Rube Goldberg machine is it just the marble falls to the ground. <laughs> what that is <laughs> i met him where after midnight i met with several engineers who were doing a deep dive on why my account and so many others seem to be absolutely crushed Hard after that two or three week return to normalcy when elon first took over they still mm. have more questions than answers but they did learn a bunch of stuff Accounts the aren't apposite. just... Don't, don't have to take it off the screen, but I would just say uh, my first guess on the answer is that all those bots that uh, those right-wing bots that were paid for got uh, taken out, basically. That's what happened. And all of a sudden, uh, you realize that your audience wasn't real. And they're still trying to figure that out. Go ahead. ...labels that are obvious to insiders. They now found more secret labels which are causing shadow bans. Uh, just so you guys know, this is what they found on my account, and that's oh. why uh, I was called in. My account was hit with all three. Recent abuse strike, recent misinformation strike, recent suspension strike. You're out. It's unclear so far what these strikes actually do, but for sure they suppress views and recommendations. They are trying to figure out to what extent. I also had many innocuous tweets labeled NSFW, not safe for work, or NSFA, not safe for ads which affect visibility in the timeline. Also, there's an entire keyword database so that machine learning makes us makes us, makes sure not to promote violence, porn, etc. Mm-hmm. But it's a mess of overreaching words. Literally, the word gay was on the keyword list, which would make you not advertiser friendly and harm the tweet in the algorithm. Pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it for a second. I mean... <laughs> oh my god he's implying that he was a uh, shadow banned because he's gay as opposed to maybe like every time like he's talking about you know the problems with the gay agenda like the gays are out of control and yeah. i'm like one of the good gays i mean that's um, the thing is like that's uh, one thing the left criticizes like whether it's uh gay um that happens yes that's a that's well, a problem <laughs> and the right, reason why that happens is-, is because you have fewer human beings who can contextualize yeah. the use of that word and mm-hmm. so the automated ai just sees the word and they default to right. There's so many homophobes on this platform. It's safer for us from an advertising perspective (laughs) to not uh, allow that tweet to get any traction. But the idea that, you know, he's like making it as if someone snuck in and nefariously put this stuff into his code, just his code. I mean, it's just it's just absurd. Yeah, there should be a code that flags stuff for too stupid for uh, human consumption. Yes, Isn't the whole thing that he was being shadow banned because he was a conservative and supporting of DeSantis and then you look under the hood and it's because you're gay. Well, what's also great is he, <laughs> right here, he does get into an example and we'll, we, we can judge that example on its merits. Okay, there we go. You not advertiser friendly and harm the tweet in the algorithm. Backing up for a sec, they found the recent suspension strike on my account most interesting because it was from July 2022 when I was suspended for calling out Jordan Peterson's unjust suspension. Pause it. So, so just to remind folks what that was, that was when Jordan Peterson, it wasn't an unjust suspension. Jordan Peterson uh, um, was we were talking about Elliot Page and called Elliot Page's doctors criminal butchers. Uh, and the, the staff of Twitter is like, yeah, that uh, crosses our uh, hate speech against And dead named Elliot Page. Uh, like coinc- named- coincidentally, like two days before uh, his Daily Wire show yeah. uh, anna- was announced well, with, yeah. Exactly. Explicitly doing that thing that was explicitly in the rules. Uh, and the only reason it's uh, uh, Dave is able to call it an unjust suspension now is because his daddy, Elon Musk, bought Twitter and said that was an unju- unjust suspension when I was suspended for calling out Jordan Peterson's unjust suspension. So though suspension was reversed, the action on the count remained. 
on the account remained. Elon was bringing in people in and out constantly and seems to be aware of pretty much every issue. Did you write this? He thinks maybe the entire code has to be torn down and start from scratch. At the end last night, he said that the whole situation is a flaming dumpster rolling down the street. So I assure you they are aware of the problems and Elon and the engineers are there all night trying to untie this crazy knot. All Some night. changes they've made like <laughs> the For You tab have confused people and hurt engagement for accounts who have gotten the NSFA label without knowing. They also don't know for sure why things got so much better once Elon made the acquisition and why it seems far worse now. Some is probably related to the excitement around Elon himself, which also coincided with the World Cup, but that doesn't explain why it feels so off right now. We'll share more in a bit, but have to catch a flight. On a personal note, Elon is funny as hell, laughs a ton, and it, it's just really obvious he cares about Twitter because he cares about free speech and this the bigger problems proud of the tweets the world. that he wrote. He, didn't, he doesn't need this headache, he chose it. Also, huge shout out to David Sachs, who is helping Elon clean up this mess because he believes in the fight for free speech as much as Elon does. Eventually and massive thanks to the engineers who opened up their computers, showed me literally everything I asked for and were total pros. Oh, and one other thing for now, Elon really lit up when we talked about the shifting political landscape out and how anyone oh, non-woke is now far right. That notion is deeply connected to how screwy things got at Twitter and he's working to fix it despite the huge change challenges ahead and then Elon Musk responded to my very wordy Twitter thread saying accurate, accurate, thread. accurate thread. thread yes okay so there's so yeah. the, the thread in which uh, Dave accurate Rubin thread. complimented me on numerous occasions is very accurate I do laugh a lot yes I am very funny <laughs> I am very funny I do laugh a lot Twitter is a flaming dumpster fire maybe I should have done a little due diligence oh well <laughs> That, the, the, the entire thing is like, oh, they're in over their head. Like, they, they don't know why anything's happening. They don't know why it was good. They don't know why it's bad now. They don't know what to do about it. But they think, you know, if they... Um, first of all, the For You tab, that, that should have been obvious to anyone who know there was a problem with the algorithms, that you don't lean into the, the tab uh, completely uh, curated by algorithms. The, the, the funny part is, is like, they... Uh how long has he owned this thing now for it it seems like an eternity but it's only Half like a, year, a couple of like. months like, no, how long? november or something like that. it was after yeah, so the election right four months oh right yeah. three, right three after months. the election three months and their plan so far seems to be to go person by person that is on the right and assess like you know how can we fix his feed so more people see it like uh, i gotta feel like they may have some more uh, pressing things to do. Uh, just the idea that that the problem with Twitter and engagement is that Dave Rubin isn't traveling enough uh, <laughs> on Twitter is when he uh, defends does, Jordan Peterson's like trans bigotry. God, I wish there was a way to short Twitter. It's like this it, has to be some like God, yeah. really amazing. But there you go, Dave. I need I need you here this weekend. Can you make it? I think we figured out what's going on, Dave. Well, we haven't, but we found some things that we don't understand on your account. And we want you to come talk about them <laughs> and how hard we're working and how, how good our intentions are. And how funny I am. Uh, I watched uh, The Born Identity with Saul. Oh, uh, over there the weekend. You go. He Do you like it? loved it. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. Oh, he loved it. In fact, we got into a big fight because the next day he wanted during the day, he was like, let's watch Born Supremacy. No, sorry, buddy. Not doing that. Got to do practice your guitar. Do something different. Um, that's. Hmm. Let's go to the phones, shall we? I don't know why I got uh, sidetracked there. I guess that was the. It was the. It was the sound. Uh, soundboard. It was the sound.